Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this peep design, which was designed by me. So I'm super happy I finally made this design because I tried to make it last year and I ran out of time before Easter. But I made it this year and look at it, it's a peep, like the candy. These two are the final version. This guy I made um, when I was just checking my pattern and I accidentally did something wrong. So while he's still cute, uh, he's not the final version, these guys are. So this is the shape of the peep. And I'm really happy with it. I think that this design is super easy too. Like it's not very hard to make. So I'm happy about that too. Um, this was the guy I made last year. I don't know if you follow my Instagram. You may have seen him and remember it. Um, so I was planning on making this last year. And I improved it since then. So it's way smaller now and a lot easier. Because that guy was a little hard to make. I don't remember what I did. I just remember it was awful. Um, my dinosaur sticker from my phone just <laughs> randomly appeared. It fell off my phone the other day, I need to glue it back on, but um, yeah, I'm really happy with this design. Um, so as of right now, I do not have the band count, so if you wanna know what the band count is, you're gonna have to check the description. I haven't done it yet, but I, my guess is it's probably around 200 or somewhere around there, so not too bad. Um, the pattern will also be in the description as well, and yeah. Like I said, I think this is a fairly easy design. I don't think it's too bad. Um, I'd say it's about the same difficulty as the bunny peep, which I made last year. So if you want to make this bunny peep, um, it's on my channel. I'll also probably put it in the uh, iCard. Sometimes I forget to put stuff in there, so it may not be there. Um, also, I recently made a playlist full of spring designs. If you just want to make designs for spring, there's a playlist for that now. So, yeah. Anyways, we'll get started. So... You're gonna need a hook for this design. You can use whatever hook you want. I'll be using my double-ended hook today just because I really like this hook. We only need one end though, so you can just use a rainbow loom hook, crochet hook, whatever you have. Um, we're also gonna need two C-clips for this design. So not one, but two. And I feel like that, like that makes it seem like it's complicated. It's not complicated. It's just to hold something for a second. So we're gonna need two C-clips. And then today, color-wise, I'm gonna be using this green color. Um, it's like a jelly green I got from Michaels. Yeah, that's it. I really think they look nice with the sweets bands though because like the glitter kind of makes it look like the sugar they have on them. But I, I'm running out of sweets bands. I need to put an order into Rain Balloon, so yeah. yeah. Also, this guy's faceless because uh, I just haven't put a face on him yet. Or I haven't put his eyes on. But yeah. So we will get started. And like I said, the pattern will be in the description. And I'm just going to start picking up bands. Also, my ring light is failing me today because I usually use a ring light when I film just to help with the whole lighting situation. And I tried to like change the setting because it has like three settings and it's stuck on one setting. It does this randomly. I don't know why, but it does. But I think the lighting in this video still looks okay. So we're still good. It's just my ring light is being annoying. Anyways, to start, we're going to start by wrapping a band three times around our hook. So one two, and then three. And we're gonna be putting eight stitches into this cap band, so let me show you how to do that. So you're gonna start by pulling a band through the whole cap band, putting both ends back on your hook, and then pushing the back one over the front one. Then we're gonna go back into the cap band, pull a band through just the cap band, both ends back on your hook, Push the back one over the front one, and then you're going to push this loop from last time over as well. And we're going to do that six more times, so we have eight stitches in total in this cap band. Also, when you go through the cap band, make sure you're going through all three loops. Sometimes it's easy to miss one. So just make sure you're going through all three. Like that, so that's four. Five. Oops. Six. Oops. Seven. Is that seven? So if you ever are lost on what number you have, you can always just start by counting the one on your hook and then count the loops backwards. So I'm going to check how many I have. So one, two, three, four five, six, seven, so I need one more, so we have eight. 
and I'll check again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And once we've made sure we have eight loops, instead of going into the cap band, we're going to go through this first loop here. And we're going to do the same thing. So we'll pull a band through just a loop, put both ends back on our hook, then you push the back one over the front one, and then you push the loop from last time over as well. And we'll be putting a C clip on this one. Like that. I also don't know if it's me, but whenever I move right now, my hands look like they're lagging. I'm going to check the footage real quick. Hold up. Okay, so we're actually fine, and also the lighting looks pretty good in this video. I just kind of zoomed us in a little more so you can see better. And yeah. Okay, but so for the next row, we are going to be doing single stitches all the way around. So we're just doing one row normal. And at the end of this row, we should still have eight. So I'll show you what we're doing. So we're just basically putting one stitch in every loop all the way around until we get back to this one that has a C-clip on it. So you'll just go through the loop, pull a band through, both ends back on, back one over the front one, now you put the loop from last time over, and we just do that in every single stitch all the way around. So we're just doing one stitch per loop until we get to the C-clip. You know, one thing I'm really starting to look into right now, um is getting a camera. I think I'm gonna get a camera for my channel. I've been doing tutorials for so long already. Like, I was worried at the start when I first started doing tutorials, that's why I just used my phone, is like, oh, what if it's just like, like, what if I'm gonna get tired of it? But I haven't gotten tired of it. I'm still making tutorials, so I think it's about time I got a camera. So hopefully soon we'll be getting a camera on this channel, but not yet. I'm looking into it though. Anyways, once you get to the C-clip, you're gonna make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And then you'll just move the C-clip from this loop up onto the loop that's on your hook. Like that. So now if you count around, you should still be at eight loops. So we'll start by counting the one on our hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So for the next two rows, we're going to be doing the exact same thing. So we are going to be increasing on the fourth and the fifth. And I'll show you what I mean by that. But basically, we're only doing two increases for this row. And they're going to be on the 4th and 5th loop. So I will show you, but I'm picking up more bands. <laughs> yeah. Seriously though about the camera thing, I'm really looking into it. I'm like, I think it's about time we're ready for a camera. But I just have to look for it. And I mean, I have the money saved up. It's just like, I don't know which one to get. But yeah. Like I said, we're increasing on the 4th and 5th, so this one with the C-clip on it is going to count as our first loop, so that'll be 1. Also, I feel like we're blurry. Why are we blurry? So this is 1. This one's going to be 2. 3. And then these next two loops will be the 4th and the 5th, so we're going to increase on the next two. So we just did 3 single stitches, so 1, 2, 3. And now we're going to do 2 increases in a row. So what an increase is, is you're going to go into the loop, you're going to make one stitch, and you're going to go back in, do another stitch, and that's an increase. So we'll show you again. So we do one stitch, go back in, make another stitch, and that's an increase. So we just increased on the fourth and the fifth, and if you got lost, like I said, I've explained the way I count before, but basically this is one, two, three. And then we did two increases, and now it's just going to be single stitches the rest of the way until we get to the C-clip. Then once you get to the C-clip, you'll make a stitch on the bone that has a C-clip on it, and then you'll move it off that loop and onto the loop on your hook. Like that. So now if we count around, we should be at 10 loops, so we'll count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we're going to do the exact same thing we did last row again. So we're going to be increasing on the 4th and the 5th. So we're just going to do that again. And after this row, we should be at 12 loops. So, yeah. And what we're doing right now is basically because we're increasing in the front here, we're making this, um, you see how he leans forward? So that's what we're doing right now, just in case you were wondering. But yeah, so this one will be one, two, three, so we just did three single stitches, so one, two, three, and then the next two will be increases, so you're going to do one increase, 
and two. Increase. And then the rest of the way, single stitches until we get to the C-clip. So we literally just did the exact same thing as last row where we did three single stitches and then two increases and then we just do single stitches the rest of the way. I hope I'm not going too fast. <laughs> Once we get to the C-clip, we'll make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it and move it up. Like that. And it should be looking something like this. So now if we count, we should be at, like I said, 12 loops. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Wait, there should be 12. What the heck? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Why are we only having 11? Hold up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3. We have 12. I just can't count. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> um... So for the next row, we're going to be doing kind of the same thing, but instead of increasing on the 4th and the 5th, we're only going to increase on the 5th. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. It was funny because I remade this guy because I was checking the pattern just before I made the tutorial. I made the sparkly blue guy like two days ago, this guy. And I was so lost as to what we're doing because I forgot that we like, I was like, why are we making it stick out so much? And I forgot we make the part front part stick out. I literally forgot how to make my design from one day to the next. It was awful, but... I remade it again, and then I, now I remember what we're doing, but yeah, it was just funny. But yeah. So like I said, for this row, we're going to be increasing on the fifth. So this one with the C-clip on it will count as one. And then this one will be two. Three. Four. So we just did four single stitches, so we can count them. One, two, three, four. So the next one's going to be an increase. So we're going to increase on this one. And then the rest of the way is just single stitches. So I know I've been talking about a lot of random topics already. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm kind of in a talkative mood today. Um, but I, no one told me that Michaels now has like buckets of pastel like um glow in the dark bands like jelly ones and i posted it on my story a few days ago because i was like what what because someone messaged me that there was um pastel like buckets and if you don't know what the buckets are they're like the buckets that have like i've, I've got them before i've shown them on my channel it's just like the buckets of michael sauce i don't know how to explain them but they have a pastel one now and i was so shocked and i posted it on my story and everyone was like yeah they've been in the stores for months i'm like well why did no one tell me if you guys see new bands, you need to let me know. Because <laughs> the truth is, I've been stocked up on bands for a while. They had the dollar band sale at Michael's a couple months ago, and I bought a bunch of bands because I was just like, they're a dollar, it's worth it. So I've been pretty stocked up, so I haven't gone to Michael's in a while. But I just thought it was funny, because everyone was like, they've been there, and I was like, well, no one told me. But yeah. Anyways, once you get to the C-clip, you'll make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it and move it up. Like that. Also, if I ever go a little too fast for you, remember you can always pause the video. Um, you don't have to keep up with me. I know I loom very fast, so you can just see the step and then pause the video if I go a little fast. Just, just a reminder. Anyways, after that row, we should be at 13. So if we count around, we should have 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we're going to do the exact same thing we did a couple rows ago. We're going to be increasing on the 4th and the 5th again. So we're going to do pretty much we do see three single stitches and then we increase. So so it'll be 1, 2, 3. So now that we've done three single stitches, we're going to do two increases right here. So we're going to increase, and then we're going to increase again, because we're increasing on the 4th and the 5th. So I'll just recap what we did. We did 3 single stitches, and then we increased on the 4th and the 5th, so just 2 right next to each other. And the rest of the way will be single stitches. I 
You know, another thing I didn't realize is how close May was because um, I've been putting off doing the 5k giveaway, you guys may have noticed. Also, we're getting close to 6k and I'm like, what the heck, guys? <laughs> I'm gaining followers and it's weird, but not important. But I've been, re like, planning the 5k giveaway. I was originally going to do it in December, but then I was like, no, I'd rather do it in the summer. I'd rather just, instead of doing, like, a weird giveaway in the winter if I just do a bigger giveaway in the summer so that's why I put that one off I was like I'm I'm planning a giveaway but I'm gonna do it in the summer and I was hoping to start it in May and then just let it run till like August or whatever I've done it before I've done a couple like loom giveaway contest things like this it's gonna be very similar to the one I did for a 3.5k I think is on this channel I also have a video I posted where I announced the winners and the giveaway and all that so yeah, but I'm planning to do another one this summer, and I didn't realize that May's already in a month. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I have to already get going on that. But anyways, once we get to the C-clip, we're just going to move it up. Like that. And now if we count around, we should be at 15. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Like that. So for this row, we're going to be increasing on the 5th. So once again, we're just doing one increase for this row. So we're just increasing on the 5th. So basically, we'll be do four single stitches and then increase. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4. So if we count backwards, we just did 1, 2, 3, 4. So the next one's the 5th. So that's the one we're going to increase on. And then once again, the rest of the way will be single stitches. I, I'm just talking whenever we do single stitches. I really hope it's not confusing you guys. But basically, whenever we're doing single stitches, I just decide to chat to you for a bit. I hope it's not too confusing. But like I said, I'm planning the giveaway for... I guess it might be by the time I actually put out the giveaway, we might actually hit 6k. So it might be the 6k giveaway now. But... I'm planning it, and I'm really excited for it, but I'm definitely going to do, like, a big giveaway in the summer. So, that's going to be fun. I'm trying to figure out how to do it, because um, I might, like, last year, I think I started it in, like, June, and then I let it run till August. But I think this year I might do, like, monthly winners or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still thinking of what to do. But, yeah, I just put off the giveaway because I was like, I could do a small giveaway in the winter, or I could just do a really big one in the summer. And I honestly just preferred to do a really big one in the summer, so I'm excited for it. I just didn't know May was so soon. Also because May is my sister's... Oh my god, May is going to be such a busy month for me. Because it's my sister's birthday, I'm going to a Coldplay concert in May, and then I'm also going on a trip in May. And I'm hoping to start the giveaway, so May is sounding to be a busy month already. Anyways, once you get to the C-clip, you'll move it up. And now if we count around... We should be at 16 loops, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I lost count. Oh, gosh. Hold up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, so now we're going to be switching it up a little bit. We are going to be doing a half row, as I call it. So we're only going to be grabbing the inside half of the loops. And we're also going to be decreasing every third. So. Also, your dude should be looking something like this. But basically, for this whole row, we're only going to be grabbing the inside half of the loops. So not the whole loop like we usually do like this. We're only going to be grabbing the inside half as well as we're decreasing every third. So this one's going to be one. We're only going to grab the inside half of the loop. Make a single stitch. So that's two. And then this next one would be the third loop. So we're going to decrease. And how we're going to decrease this way, because usually when you decrease, you grab the inside part of one loop and the back part. We're going to grab both the inside loops. So we're just going to go inside loop, inside loop. And then we'll make a stitch on this. So I'll show you that again in a second. So once again, we're going to do two single stitches. So one. And remember, we're only grabbing the inside half of the loop. Two. 
and then we're going to decrease. And when we decrease, you just only grab the inside half of each loop. Like that. So, do two single stitches again. So one, two. Then we do a decrease, so inside part of both loops. And we just keep doing this all the way around, so two single stitches and then you do a decrease because we're decreasing every third and I need more bands you know it has been a while since I filmed a tutorial because I don't know if I mentioned this already I'm sorry if I did um, but I'm taking an art class right now and it's taking up so much of my time and I've been wanting to film some stuff and I haven't been able to and today's like the first day where I can film something so I'm kind of, I feel like I'm in a very happy mood for today's tutorial because I just haven't filmed a tutorial in a while and I'm like oh I'm so happy to be back filming I really do love making tutorials I don't know if you guys think I do this just I don't know why you guys would think I don't do this for fun I love doing this but yeah I'm excited to be filming today Anyways, once you get to the C-clip, you're just going to make a stitch on the one that has the C-clip on it. And we go through the whole loop. And then you'll just move your C-clip up. So after that last row, we should be at 12 loops. So if we count around, we should have 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Like that. Yep. Okay. So for the next row, we're going to be decreasing every other, and what that basically means is we're just going to alternate between doing a single stitch and then doing a decrease. So this one's going to count as our single stitch, so the next one will be a decrease. And now when we're decreasing, we don't have to grab both the inside halves, we'll do inside half, outside half. And then you just make a stitch on that. So we just did a decrease, so now we're going to do a single stitch. Then we'll do a decrease, and we can go back to decreasing like we usually do. We only grab both the inside half for the last row because it was a half row. So we'll do single stitch. So you're just alternating between single stitches and decreasing. But yeah. Oops. The band's leaving. There we go. So we'll decrease. Single stitch. Oh my god. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way so you guys can see what I'm doing and I'm dropping all the bands. Oops. Then once you get to the C-clip, you'll just make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it and move it up. So now we are going to stuff this guy. So you can take your hook out. I already did. Um, and if you just let it hang on the C-clip, as long as you don't pull on it too much, it shouldn't come out. I'll be using cotton balls to stuff my things. You know, I really do feel like cotton balls do work better for my designs because I know a lot of people use polyfill. I don't know if cotton balls are cheaper or more expensive. I don't think they're too bad if you get them on sale. I don't know. My mom never complains about buying cotton balls for me. But I really think my designs are always better when they're stuffed with cotton balls just because they're not like when you really pull um, or whenever you attach anything with polyfill, it always ends up sticking out. And I don't have that problem with cotton balls, so I prefer them. I mean, even if a little sticks out, I feel like it's not bad, as bad as polyfill. I'm stuffing him off camera. You guys don't need to see me stuff him. It's fairly self-explanatory. Just make sure you put stuffing in the head and you don't forget. So my guy's good now. So I'm going to put my hook back in. And the, if you don't know which direction to put your hook in, you can kind of tell the loops are all going this direction. So my hook's going to go in this direction. Did I count after last row? I don't know if I did, but um, if I forgot to, we're supposed to have nine loops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now we're just going to decrease everything till close. So we can take out the C-clip at this point. And every single stitch we're going to do is going to be a decrease until we can't decrease anymore. So we're just going to decrease absolutely everything until it is closed. So once you have the last decrease up on your hook, you're just going to pull a band through everything on your hook. 
push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then we'll just tuck our tail into our peep. Like that. So hopefully you can see where this is going, kind of. We have our main peep bit. He's kind of leaning back. Yep. Okay. So now we're going to do the butt, I guess, or the tail. Just this thing around. So we're going to do that. So let me get some more bands. Okay, so I paused to get bands and stuff, but... We are going to start to do the tail thing, and basically what we're going to do, let me make sure my camera's focused, is we are going to stitch around the bottom here. And basically, where we're going to stitch in, to me it's kind of obvious because I made a bunch of peeps. This is the side I can tell where we, um, like where our C-clip was. So just go to whichever side looks more clear, this side kind of looks more clear. So you can tell that this is where we did the half row. And you see these loops right here where they're like, um, like you can tell we only stitch on the inside half of those. We're going to go right here. So between that. And we're going to make a stitch. And we're just going to stitch all the way around going pretty much right here. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. I'm hoping you can see where I'm stitching. So you can tell that that's right there. And I just go in between those two. And I make a stitch. And we just do this all the way around on all the stitches. I feel like it's pretty simple. I'm always so bad at telling you guys exactly where to stitch in. I always just hope you can see where I'm stitching in. And look on yours and be like, ah, oh, yes, that's where I stitch in. But hopefully it's fine. Basically, you just want to stitch around around the bottom. I mean, if you're a little off, it's probably fine. It, it might be a little awkward and messy right here with the C-clip buds, so just do your best to figure out where to stitch in. It's okay if it's not exact. We're just going to stitch all the way around. I usually just basically go right above where the half row is, and you can tell where it is because it kind of flattens out on the bottom. I just stitch all the way around. I feel like this tail is also the part that takes the most bands. <laughs> Once we get to the first loop, and you can tell that it's this loop right here, that's the weird starting bit. Don't go into that on accident. It should be right here. We'll just make a stitch, and we'll put a C-clip on this one. I also don't like which way my stitches are facing. I'm being picky. Ignore this. It doesn't matter if your stitches are facing up or down, but I want mine to face up because I'm picky. Anyways, we're going to put a C-clip on this one. And that's basically our first row around the, this guy for the tail. If we count, we should be around 16 loops, I believe. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. A 15? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3. So I have 15, but sometimes I have 16. But if you have 15 or 16, you should be fine. I think it just depends on how you stitch the bottom, but uh, if you have 15 loops or 16 loops, you're fine. So now what we're going to do for the next row is we are going to increase everything all the way around. So every single stitch we do is going to be an increase. And at the end of this row, you should be at either 32 loops or... Is that right? 32? That's right, 32 <laughs> loops, or you should be at 30 loops, I believe. Like I said, it doesn't really matter if you have either 16 or 15. But yeah, we're increasing everything all the way around. So every single stitch we do is going to be an increase. We're just doing this. We're increasing. I'm trying to think if there's anything I could talk about. There actually is. So I don't know if I said on this channel, but I'm going to... I said I had a trip in May. 
and it's because I'm going with um my class from my community college. Well, not really my class. I only know the teacher and I know my one of my classmates. Um, I knew two people who were going on this trip, but she ended up not being patient with the pandemic and like went in the middle of the pandemic because we're going through some program. But I'm going on a trip in May to Paris, Italy, London, and Rome, I believe. And I'm really excited to go with my class, but I'm also terrified because I've never been on a plane or anything. So I've never been on a plane in my life. I've never traveled. I'm not traveling alone, though. I'm with a class and a whole group of people, but yeah. And I'm mainly going because, if you don't know already, I am into art. I want to go into art as my career, and there's a lot of art over there, and I'm super excited to see all of it. Like, that's literally my main purpose in going is because I want to go see all the art that's over there. Like, it, it would be so cool to see some stuff that I've always seen in, like, books and stuff, like, actually in person. So that's my main reason for going, and I'm really excited to go, but it's in May, and I didn't realize May was so soon, because I got my passport today, because I had to get a passport, and I had to put, a, put it into the website we're using, because we're going through some, some program thing, and it was like, 41 days till year departure, and I'm like, excuse me, what? I swear, my sense of time is so bad, like, I feel like May is not that soon, but literally, I'm going to be going on this trip in about, a, like, a month and two weeks. Which is insane. I'm super excited though. And I'm, I'm going to take a bunch of loom things to take photos of over there, obviously. And I, I'm, I'm kind of scared for that too because when I was at like my community college, I didn't tell anyone I did rainbow loom for obvious reasons. I was just like, nope, don't do that. Um, But I do do it and I want to go take photos over there. So I'm going to. I'm going to take my stuff, but I just... They're probably going to find it weird at first, but they'll be chill about it hopefully. I just like taking photos of other places. One photo I really want to do, because obviously we'll be in Paris, so like the Eiffel Tower will be there and all that. I really want to take my miraculous Tsum Tsums like a ladybug and a cat noir and take a photo of them over there. I think that's going to be like so cute. I already have this whole idea in my head for the picture. I also keep joking with my family that they're not going to get any photos of me, like, because I don't really take photos of myself. Um, I mean, I was just hands on this channel for so long. I don't really like showing my face and stuff. Um... I just keep joking with my parents, like, you guys aren't gonna get any photos of me, you'll just get, like, photos of my loom things in various spots in Paris <laughs> and stuff. But yeah, I'm excited for the trip, but I'm also terrified. I'm also gonna probably try to cram a bunch of art history in in the next couple weeks, because I need to brush up on it. I took an art history class that was mainly about paintings for that are, like, over there in, like, London and all that. But I forgot most of them, so I'm gonna have to brush up on that. Mainly because I'm just going to see the art. Obviously, you can go to Paris for any reason, but I am going to see the art and just have fun with one of my classmates. But yeah. I'm excited, though. I think I'll be fine. But yeah, I'm super excited for it. So once we get to the C-clip, we'll make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip on it and move it up. I feel like I'm looming in this corner of the screen, I'm sorry. So after that, you should have basically a lot of loops. I usually don't count around because it's a lot of counting, but you should be at like 30 or 32 loops, somewhere around there. But basically, you should have just increased every single stitch all the way around. And I don't think I'm going to count, but you, I can tell I did increases in every single loop. And now here's the part we needed the second C-clip for. So you're going to want to take your hook out. And you're going to come to the back of your peep. So you can tell this is the front because this is the part where he's like leaning forward. Or like leaning back, I guess. Like opposite of this. So this is the front. This is the back. And we're going to increase three on the back right here. So we're going to come... I'm going to come right here. So you're just going to pick three loops. So I'm going to increase in these three because they're directly from the back. And I'm just going to do three increases in a row. So one, it's one stitch, I'm trying to do an increase. One, two, this is the second increase. This one will be the third increase. Like that. So we just did three increases in a row on the back, so I just went directly from where the front is. 
the back to three increases. And we're gonna put a C-clip on this and we're gonna take our hook out. So we're just gonna have the C-clip hold this. You could also just slip tie it down if you don't have a C-clip, but I'm gonna just let my C-clip hold this part of the tail. And this is just to make sure the back sticks out a little bit more than the front. So like that, so we just did three increases in the back. And now we're gonna put our hook back into this C-clip. Like that. And we're just gonna do a row of single stitches all the way around. And I'll tell you what to do when we get to this weird back part, but yeah. I also hope that wasn't too confusing. So let me pick up some more bands. See, I always don't know if I explain good on days where I have a lot of energy, because I feel like I don't. I just have energy today. Oops, I dropped a band. I don't know where it went. It's fine. Picking up bands. I always feel like the tail like uses so much bands. I feel like his body does it. I need to do the band count and I'm pro it's probably gonna be like the tail is where all the bands are used. I've been calling it the tail. I don't know what it is. This bottom thing. But anyways, like I said, we're just doing single stitches all the way around. And the only part where we do a little bit of a weird thing is when we get to that weird flap we have in the back. So I'll tell you what to do when we get there. But until then, just do single stitches until you get there. So just single stitches all the way around. Let me zoom out my camera a little bit because this guy's getting kind of big. There we go. It's a little easier for me to loom now. Anyways, I'm gonna keep talking about my Paris trip because why not? Because it takes a <laughs> it takes a second to go around this guy because he's really big right now, or at least his bottom bit's really big. But yeah, you know, I was really debating going on the trip to Paris because honestly, um, when I was in classes when they were first talking about doing this trip, because we're going with one of my art teachers, um, I really wanted to go because once again, I thought it would be awesome to go see like a lot of that stuff in person, but. I ended up not going the first time because I couldn't get my parents to say okay. And because of the pandemic, it got delayed and that is literally the only reason I'm allowed to go on this trip was because because it got delayed, they were able to accept more people. So I was able to go. And at first I was like, I don't know if I should go, I don't know if I should do it. But then after the pandemic and everything, I felt like it was kind of like a sign, like this whole thing got moved back. I am able to go on it. I should just go. So I actually signed up without telling my parents first. I mean, I'm 21. I shouldn't have to ask my parents, but I'll, I don't know why I just said but in Spanish too. Like, I've been watching Spanish shows and I feel like it's running off on me, but, um, but, so I didn't ask them first. I just signed up and then told them like a couple months after I signed up that I had signed up for a trip to Paris. And my mom's convinced it's not happening, so I'm a little bit dreading the week when she realizes I'm actually going on this trip because my mom has always wanted to go to Paris. And that's kind of part of the reason why I signed up too, was just like, I see my mom who's always wanted to go to some place and she never was able to. And like, I don't want to regret it either, not going. So I was just like, I should just go. Also, I have the money to go. So it's not like, see, that's what the other thing I felt like is like, when am I going to have the money to go on a trip like this again? I probably won't. So I'm just doing it even though it is kind of terrifying because I have never traveled without my family. But once we get to this weird bit, we're going to stop one stitch before these loops. And what we're going to do is on this loop before the, the weird bit, we're going to do an increase. So we're just going to increase. Like that. And that was just on the loop before we go up to here. And then once we get up here, we're just going to do single stitches across this until we get to the last one with a C-clip on it. So we're just going to do single stitches on all these. And you're going to go all the way up until the one with a C-clip. Then you'll put the one with a C-clip on it on your hook and take the C-clip out. Then we'll come down to this one. We'll do a single stitch. And then you'll just push this loop over. And then the back one over the front one. Well, not the back one over the front one, the last loop. Hopefully you saw what I did there. Let me redo that. 
So we have these three on our hook like this. You push that loop over, and then you push this loop over like that. And then it's just single stitches the rest of the way. Let me pick up some more bands. And we are almost done after we do this. This is like the longest row of this whole thing. Almost there. But yeah. I don't know, I've just been thinking about my trip a lot because I think my parents also think it was kind of dumb I spent so much money to go on this trip, but I don't think I would ever be able to go on a trip like this. I also feel like it would maybe have been different have if my pa family does travel a lot, but we don't really travel beyond like road trips and stuff. So I know we would never do something like this, um, which is also partially why I did it, <laughs> like decided to go on this trip to Rome and all that. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like if my family was one of those families who like travel places all the time, I probably wouldn't have gone on it because I've probably been places before. But because we don't travel a lot, I was like, this is the opportunity. But like I said, I think my parents thought it was a waste of money, but I think it's going to be worth it. Also, I was thinking that my older brother, I never talk about him for obvious reasons, but, well, not for obvious reasons, you don't need to know the reasons, but I'll, I keep nearly saying but in Spanish. Sorry if I've done that twice already. I, like, mix but and then, like, Spanish. Like, the Spanish word for but. <laughs> not the body part, like, oh my god, this is awful. I, I hate that I can't edit my videos sometimes. Um, but yeah. Then I was thinking about my older brother at my age, and, like, what he did is he bought a wedding ring with probably about the same amount of money I spent on this trip. I didn't spend too much, but my brother spent like a couple thousand on a wedding ring for some girl. Like, at least I'm not getting married. They should think of it that way. <laughs> I'm just going on a trip to look at art. Like, at least I'm not getting married. But yeah. Anyways, now that we've done that row, what we're gonna do next is a little weird, but basically we're kind of gonna fold over this bit and tie it into the bottom. Now I know you can't see what I was doing there, but we're basically gonna kind of fold this over and then stitch into the bottom. So, and we're gonna be decreasing the whole time. So we're gonna decrease everything as well as stitch into the bottom and kind of tie it in. So I'll show you how we do that. So, like I said, we're decreasing everything. So we're gonna pick up both loops like we're gonna decrease. And then we're gonna go through part of the bottom part here. I usually go just wherever you're not going to want to go into anything that's like the tail flap thing we made. You want to go into the actual bottom bit. And just go in wherever. And then you'll pull a stitch or pull a band through everything with the last loop on your hook. Push the back one over the front one. And then push the loop from last time over as well. So I'll show you that again. So we'll pick up a decrease. So we're decreasing everything. So we'll pick it up like a decrease. Then we'll go through part of the bottom of our peep and you pull a band through everything but the last loop on your hook then you push the back one over the front one and then you push this loop from last time over and we basically do this all the way around it does get a little bit different when we get to this pointy tail bit but yeah we're just gonna keep doing that so you'll just pick up a decrease because we're decreasing everything then you go through part of the bottom of your peep just wherever I don't really go into the consistently the same spot, I just go to wherever feels feels like it should be. It's usually also on the very edge, I don't go very deep into my peep. And we just make a stitch, so once again, pick up the decrease, go through part of our peep, pull the band through everything but the last loop on your hook, push the back one over the front one, ah! Oh my god, hold up. I lost my decrease. <laughs> okay, I'll show you that again. So we pick up our decrease. Then we go through part of the peep, the bottom of the peep. Pull this through everything on our hook, except for the last loop. Both hands back on our hook. Push the back one over the front one, and then push this loop from last time over as well. And like I said, we keep doing this all the way around. So we just pick up our decrease, go through part of our peep, pull it through everything on our hook except the last loop, 
It's also really hard for me to do this on camera because it's a little awkward to loom off camera. So on camera, I'm having a great time. <laughs> but we'll pull it through everything with the last loop. Push the back one over the front one. And then push the loop from last time over. And we just keep doing this all the way around. You can kind of get a feel for what we're doing now. And we just do this all the way around until we get to the C-clip. We do a little bit different at the bottom part here because we don't stitch into the bottom part of the peep. This this bottom sticky outy bit, we just stitch it over so that way it's folded over, but it's not like all the way down here. Just so it sticks out a little more. But I'll just keep going until I get to this part to show you how to do that. So we just keep doing decreases and going into the bottom. Like that. And this is like the weirdest part of the peep, but I don't think it's hard to do. It's just a little bit tight and a little bit weird. But I don't think it's hard. Okay, so I'm at the part where we're about to go onto the tail. So I'm going to pick it up like a decrease. And basically the only thing you're going to want to do different than over here when we're on the tail is you're, you're going to want to stitch a little bit into the tail more than the actual peep butt. So you're just going to go through part of the, like this thing we stuck out. I don't know what, it's pretty much the tail. And you do the same thing, it's just you don't want to go in so, um, like you don't want to fold it all the way down so it's at where the actual like peep is. You just want to fold it over slightly, so I'll show you that again. So we'll pick up our decrease. And then you can tell I'm on the tail. I'm only going to go down to about right here, so I'll go through this part. So I'm not going through the chick. So you can see that the actual like chick piece we made earlier is down he here. And I'm going in about right here. So I'm not going in too far. Like that. And it's just so that way it folds over. But it's not like all the way um, down there. And if your tail looks awkward, just move where you stitched in. Because if it looks like this is pulling too far under, it's probably because you're stitching too far inward. You're going to want to stitch very on the edge. And same thing for the tail. Just make sure your tail looks good. And if you're not happy with it, you can always just move where you stitched in. But yeah, you'll just pick up the decrease. And because this is the tail, I'm going to go in like right here. Make a stitch. Like that. Stitching on this tail part is like the most awkward bit. After this it gets better. But basically with the tail or like the part that really sticks out, you just want to stitch like, you just don't want to fold it too far in, basically. And then you want to gradually kind of get closer to the actual main chick bit once you start coming down from the tail. And my camera's about to time out, so let me pause real quick. <laughs> okay, I just picked up some bands, but we're just going to keep doing what we've been doing. And just make sure you like how the, everything's looking. Gosh. Almost at the C clip. Then you'll just decrease. And you can decrease on the one with the C clip on it if you have to. I need two for my last one, so we'll just decrease. I'll probably just tie it off on this one. So once you've made it back to the one with the C clip on it, you'll just pick up the last decrease and everything, and you'll just pull a band through everything on your hook. Push the back one over the front one and pull tight, and then you just hide your tail in. And that's it. So you're just going to want to make sure your tail looks okay. Sometimes it looks a little awkward and you have to squish it a bit. Also, I'm sorry, I don't know when it went blurry. I was looking down. 
look. And then there we go. It's perfect. So you do have to sometimes squish your tail a little bit. It might look a little awkward, especially where we increased. Um, but it should be looking more or less okay. And if your tail looks like really like pulled in or weird, it's just because you stitched way too far down in when you were just like doing this weird last row. Um, and you can always just undo and redo that. It's honestly kind of trial and error on how far to fold it under. Um, I just kind of know where to fold it under because I have made a couple peeps already. So yeah. So for the last thing we need to do other than the eyes is the beak. And the beak is really simple. We're going to come in the front here. So, And we stitch on three stitches. So I can already tell that there's three stitches right here in the front that I want to use. So we're going to stitch across these three. So we'll stitch across those three and then we're going to turn so we're going to we're facing this way we're going to turn so we're facing this way we're going to decrease so we'll pick up the so we'll pick it up like a decrease and then we'll pull a band through everything on our hook put the back one over the front one and pull tight and then the trick to this beak is just to hide it in kind of some of these bands so i'm going to go through some of the bands that are the beak And then pull the tail in and then hide it into our chick. Like that. And then you should have this like really weird tiny beak. And that is how you make the beak to your chick. If it looks a little awkward, you just have to probably pull at it a little bit. That's usually what happens if it looks awkward at all. Like that. So the very last thing we need to do is eyes. So let me go grab some eyes real quick. Okay, I got my eyes and a piece of string. So you don't want to get a piece of string and whatever you want to use for your eyes. I mean, if you're using safety eyes, you don't follow this. Um, if you don't have beads, you can always wrap a band four times around your hook and pull a band through and it'll work the same as the eye. So you're going to want to take your bead, take your string, put the bead on the string. And you're going to take a band, put it on the string as well. And then you're going to fold over and go back through the bead. And then you just slide it on. You do this for both of the eyes. I still have so many bands on my finger that I didn't use. And we'll just tie these into either side of our peep's face. Um, I'm going to put the eye right here. We'll just tie it in. And you hide your tails. I'm going to put both the eyes in and then hide my tails. That's something I've been doing lately and I think it helps. Like not... Like you don't have to worry too much if you don't like where the eyes are because you can move them pretty easily. But I think my eyes are actually perfect, so we'll just tuck the tails in. And that's pretty much it for this guy, because peeps are pretty a simple shape. So that's pretty much it. You could add cheeks if you wanted to. I really don't, because I know peeps don't actually have cheeks. So I usually just leave them like this. You could probably add a bow too or something, but I, I like leaving them like this. So I think that is it for this tutorial. If you make a peep, definitely share it with me on Instagram. I love seeing when you guys make my things. And yeah. And I'm trying to think if I have anything else. Uh, My mind's a little everywhere. But yeah, if you make a peep, definitely share it with me on Instagram. I would love to see how they turn out. I leave my Instagram in the description as long as as well as my Etsy and everything else. Also, if you want to see what designs are coming, I actually oh, I have something new I can show you that'll be coming to this channel shortly after this one, which I don't know if it's a dumb design, but you can probably tell what they are and they're Easter related. They're jelly beans. I'm going to make a jelly bean tutorial. I feel like it's the dumbest design, but uh yeah. But yeah. 
Also, I do have a bunny peep tutorial, so if you want to make a bunny peep, you can. I'll link it in the iCard, I hopefully will remember. And I'll also link it down in the description in case you want to check it out. And yeah, I think that is it for this video. I hope you like it. Um, like I said, subscribe if you want to see more videos from me, and check me out on Instagram if you want to see what's coming up. But I think that is it for this tutorial, so I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> I keep thinking I have something else to say, but I'm pretty sure that's it. <laughs> Bye.